Hello guys and welcome back. This is part two of the echocardiographic assessment of aortic regurgitation. Thank you all for watching and don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. So let's start with part two of the echocardiographic assessment of aortic regurgitation. In our last video, we were talking about the qualitative parameters for the assessment of aortic regurgitation. Now let's continue and the next qualitative parameter for the assessment of aortic regurgitation is the jet width LVOT diameter ratio. The jet width LVOT diameter ratio compares the color flow jet width with the left ventricular outflow tract diameter. A ratio of less than 25% is consistent with mild aortic regurgitation and a ratio of more than 65% is consistent with severe aortic regurgitation. The jet width LVOT diameter ratio is a simple measurement performed from the parasternal long axis view. However, there are three important limitations. Number one, whilst measurement of the left ventricular outflow tract diameter is optimized owing to excellent axial resolution, the color Doppler measurement of the jet width may be underestimated depending on the jet angle. Limitation number two, a single view may not accurately characterize the three-dimensional jet shape. And limitation number three, progressive jet broadening distal to the vena contracta limits reproducibility. The next qualitative parameter for the assessment of aortic regurgitation is the flow reversal in the descending thoracic aorta and abdominal aorta. If the aortic regurgitation regurgitant volume is sufficiently large, blood flow in the aorta will reverse during diastole. As aortic regurgitation becomes progressively more severe, diastolic flow reversal lasts proportionally more of diastole. Holodiastolic flow reversal within the descending thoracic aorta with an end diastolic velocity greater than or equal to 20 cm per second is consistent with severe aortic regurgitation. The presence of any flow reversal in the abdominal aorta, while not seen frequently, is a highly specific indicator for severe aortic regurgitation. Color M mode from the suprasternal notch and the subcostal view may prove helpful in the assessment of flow reversal duration and severity. It is important to appreciate that flow reversal is occasionally seen in the setting of rapid elastic recoil of the descending aorta and or aortic stiffness of the abdominal aorta even in the absence of important aortic regurgitation. Now, what are the key points to take when we assess for flow reversal in the descending aorta and abdominal aorta? First, holodiastolic flow reversal within the descending thoracic aorta with an end diastolic velocity greater than or equal to 20 centimeters per second is consistent with severe aortic regurgitation. Second, the presence of diastolic flow reversal in the abdominal aorta is consistent with severe aortic regurgitation. Third, 
Remember that color M mode provides a graphical representation of reversal flow and can be used from both the supersternal notch and the subcostal window. And fourth and last key point, elastic recoil within the aorta may lead to false positive findings of diastolic flow reversal. That's it for the qualitative parameters for the assessment of aortic regurgitation. Now let's start with the semi-quantitative parameters for the assessment of aortic regurgitation. And our first parameter is the vena contracta width. Regurgitant jets have three constituent parts. The flow convergence zone, the vena contracta and the jet expansion. The vena contracta represents the narrowest portion or the neck of the jet and it is directly related to the size of the regurgitant orifice. It is important to appreciate that the vena contracta does not occur at the level of the cusp tips, but immediately downstream because when blood flows through an orifice, the jet continues to contract for a short duration. Vena contracta width provides a surrogate measure for the effective regurgitant orifice area and, wherever possible, an assessment of vena contracta should be made in all patients with more than mild aortic regurgitation. An important limitation of this measure is that it assumes that the regurgitant orifice is circular, whereas in practice this is frequently not the case. As such, Assessing the vena contracta width from a single 2D window may lead to either under or overestimation of the effective regurgitant orifice area. The use of 3D echo has the potential to overcome this limitation. Now, what are the key points to take when using vena contracta for the assessment of aortic regurgitation? First, the vena contracta width represents the narrowest portion of the regurgitant jet and is a surrogate measure for the effective regurgitant orifice area. Second, a vena contracta diameter more than 0.3 cm is consistent with mild aortic regurgitation and a vena contracta diameter more than 0.6 cm is consistent with severe aortic regurgitation. Third, vena contracta width may under or overestimate aortic regurgitation severity in the context of a non-circular regurgitant orifice. And the fourth and last key point, three-dimensional vena contracta may be considered when imaging windows allow, particularly if undertaking transesophageal echocardiography. That's all for this video. Please continue to watch part 3 of the echocardiographic assessment of aortic regurgitation. And thank you for watching and don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. Bye!